So ECR10, as you learned, is not new. For like non-electric vehicles, it has been there since decades. And one or some of the tests that are defined for non-electric cars, but also for electric cars, is the so-called radiated immunity and emission tests. And these are performed in, a, in an EMC chamber, so in an absorber room or chamber, uh, with the like EMC RF equipment, I would say. So the car is then put on a rotary table, and then you do all the uh, rated emission and immunity tests. Now, this is true for the car when it's not in charging mode, so when it's driving, actually. And this is the same, exactly the same for an electric vehicle. But the difference here is for the electric vehicle, some additional tests have to be performed during charging. So this means the EMC chamber has to be equipped with some kind of, I would call it, charging infrastructure. Okay. And the charging infrastructure is needed to actually charge the car, because the test condition is that the car has to be charged, and also to support the different charging modes and standards. Okay. And this is quite tricky, and I learned out of experience from from a lot of EMC labs that have an EMC chamber for radiator testing, that is quite of a challenge to them to actually retrofit or build new EMC chambers for the requirements of ECR10 for electric vehicles. Okay, and that's why I would like to, to, to highlight here uh, some, some challenges and also to show you the basic concept. I think that really helps to better understand it. So in the EMC chamber for the electric vehicle, as I said, there's during charging, there's the whole uh, radiated immunity and emission testing, but there's also the conducted, so the cable-bound measurements and immunity tests. And one is, for example, in the RF, so in the higher frequency range, is the uh, conducted emission measurements and the conducted immunity tests, and for that you use some high-voltage listens or line impedance stabilization networks, so some artificial networks, which are then placed inside the EMC chamber. Now for charging, obviously, it needs a supply. Okay. And the charging is not only in in the chamber required or the, the supply, but it's also in the I call it conducted test area. Because as you as you saw in the table earlier, there are lots of, lots of tests added. For example, the harmonics and flicker and surge and burst testing, and this is typically done outside of the conduct of the EMC chamber in a so-called conducted test area because it does not doesn't need a it doesn't need a, an absorber room. So the supply then needs to actually go to the EMC chamber and the conducted test area, and now. Some of you might know, some of my, some of you might not know that there are different ways of charging an electric car. And one, and the the way of charging is called modes. So there's mode one, two, three, four, and mode one, two, three is, is AC charging. And AC charging, the the setup is relatively straightforward. So you have some some kind of a grid simulator or source. Usually, it's not the grid that is used, and we will come to that later. But some kind of electronic source, and you have a, an EV, EVSE, so that's the electric vehicle supply equipment, which is usually <clears throat> a, a charging station simulator. And we will see why this is required. So then the source provides AC a supply to the EVS, EVSE, and the EVSE supplies AC supply to the chamber and to the conducted test area. Now in DC. It is a very similar setup. There's DC charging, the so-called mode four. So that's high power charging with uh, 100 kilowatts or even higher. So the charging, you know, like during the break on the highway for 30 minutes, you get to 80% of state of charge. So that's done through DC charging. And like since ECR10 does not differentiate between AC and DC charging, all the tests need to be done on DC, DC charging uh, functionality as well. So the EMC chamber and the conducted test area needs all the DC supply to measure or to test in when the car is charged in mode three. And for this, 
again, a source or grid simulator is required that provides DC power, then a simulator, a charging station simulator, and then the DC power is provided to the, the EMC chamber and the conducted test area. The test conditions which are defined in ECR 10 is that the battery state of charge, so the load of the battery needs to be between 20 and 80 percent, and the charging current needs to be higher than 80 percent for most of the tests, not, not for all of the tests. So uh, this is actually quite a challenge because in like in, in real world testing, I would say this is really really a challenge because you need to keep the car always between 20 to 80 percent state of charge, and it's impossible to perform all the tests of ECR10 in just one charging cycle. So imagine you 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 start charging at 20 percent. So you start with your RF immunity in the mission tests. And uh, it's maybe a fast charger through DC, so it takes half an hour, half, or half an hour to, to get the car batteries at 80%. So you have to actually stop testing because you're outside of the test condition. And now the battery is charged. And how to get rid of, of the energy? Now, there are several ways to do that. You can either just drive around in a parking lot, which I actually have seen customers doing that, just to basically get down or discharge the car. Obviously, there are other ways you can actually use the test bench. You get a gyrometer on the on the test bench to actually ro kind of roll off the energy. And there's also a third, and I think the most clever way is to, if the car allows it, to discharge it also here uh, through the charging station simulator and the, the source. So there, there are like there's equipment that supports this discharging of the car. And the advantage is A, it's much faster, and B, the, the electrical energy is actually recovered to the grid, so it's not lost in, in heat or, or, or any, way, any other way. Okay. So the challenge, second challenge I really want to mention is about discharging the vehicle, which takes time, but you, need, you have to do that. Okay. So I said most of the times uh, this EVSEE, so the electric vehicle supply equipment, so in short the charging station equivalent, it can be actually achieved in two ways in for test setups like this. And the first way is to actually use a standard charging station, so a charging station that is commercially available. Uh, and the second way is to use a charging station simulator. And Obviously, each of the two solutions have advantages and disadvantages, and I just try to, to list a few of them. So clearly, the advantage of the standard charging station, it's, it's, it's a lower price. It's, it's relatively cheap. Even the DC, the DC charging station compared to a simulator, they are, they are much, much cheaper. Also, the setup is, uh, is usually simpler because they have like standard uh, charging blocks, and it's also like how to use them, it, it's quite straightforward, right? It offers limited functionality, but which are most of the times enough for testing. And also the availability, so there are like dozens of, today, dozens of uh, suppliers of charging stations, so it, it might be quite easy to get one for your lab as well. The advantage of the charging station simulator on the right-hand side is that it covers really a wide range of charging modes and standards, and we will see what that means later. It also allows discharging, if the, as I said, if the car allows it, and this is not usually not the case for charging stations. It allows further testing, for example, testing of the protocol, or you can maybe just disable some parts of the protocol, etc. I think a big plus is that it evolves with the standards, so charging standards, they change over time. And with a simulator, you, you just you're, you're more flexible in, in, in that perspective. It can be even, it can be built EMC proven. We'll see that later on, and large range of connection, and it can be customizable. So if you're looking more for like a, a cheaper solution, a, a like a with less functionality, I think it's possible to use a standard charging station for a test setup as well. <clears throat> if you're looking for like the 
the, the, the more more functionalities and the more proven solution, a more flexible solution than the charging station simulator is the right choice. Yeah, so as I said, charging standards and uh, and modes. So the, the benefit here is really, and I'm showing just one of the products. There, there are several ones uh, of this EVSE simulator. Is that uh, they support really a large number of of standards. As you might know, that that there are like many, or like about three or four standards uh, charging standards in the world for electric vehicles. So if you're an OEM uh, or if you're, a, a, for example, an onboard charger manufacturer, you need to make sure that your your car works all around the globe if you want to sell it to different countries. So you need to make you need to make sure that it support that it supports all the different charging standards, and not only the standards but also the modes. So it's AC and DC charging, and so ECR10 is more about is more giving like the minimum testing requirements. But actually, to make to make a good product or to make a good electric car, it it needs to have much much more functionality, and that's actually core with, with such a charging station simulator. So, for example, you could you could uh, test uh, a CCS or in CCS the charging standard with mode four and perform, perform all the ECR10 tests, and then you do the, the same for the GBT in mode three, et cetera, et cetera. So it's quite a lot of testing required for a full car, for the, for full, for the full functionality. 